If you have a sewing machine and you don't have an overlocker, you've only got half of the story. With an overlocker, it is so much more than just finishing off the edges of your fabric so that it doesn't fray. However, that's really important. If you make things like cushion covers or tailoring or dressmaking, things that go into the washing machine or are worn quite a lot because the edges of the fabric can fray. And an overlocker is particularly important if you are making things for other people or if you're selling anything that you've made because then you're going to get a very professional finish. Um, you can use it not just for finishing off the seams but for the seams themselves like on the apron that's been made here. On the inside every one of those strips of fabric have been pieced together using your overlocking machine so they're strong and they're sturdy. I'll talk you around the machine in just a second. Now this Singer overlocker or serger as they call it in the States has four threads. You can use all four together if you wish. Two of them are upper threads, two of them are lower threads. You can also use this with just three threads and that's explained in the manual. The threads all sit onto the back of the machine and come up through the loop, through the mast and down through the first four sections here. Every one of these is a tension. When you're threading up your, um, your overlocker, always start with the one on this side. Um, the tension will be set to number three when you first get this home. Leave it at number three while you use your first piece of fabric and if you do need to adjust the tension, you'll know that because the stitches won't sit perfectly flat, but just adjust them slightly. And again, that's all explained in the manual. As this, the thread comes down, in between the discs here is where the tension actually is, so make sure that they're pulled nice and tight to engage into the tension. And then this is the bit that normally scares people about threading up an overlocker, but actually once you've done it once, it's really easy. All of the different threads will be colour coordinated depending on where they're going to go. And, and there is a diagram here to show you which one to actually thread up first of all. In this case, just the second one along. So you thread the red, then the orange, then the green, and then the blue. Follow the dots, because for instance, with the red, there's a red dot here, which would be number one, and a red dot here, so you know that's the second loop to catch it underneath. That's the third one, and the fourth one is right at the top of the little um, eye here, and then you'll go through the needle. There are two needles on the machine, so two threads for the lower and two threads for the upper. Just here on the machine is a blade, so at the same time as you're overlocking the edge of your fabric, you're snipping away the excess fabric, but for different looks and different types of sewing, you can lift the blade out of the way. Another feature of this overlocker is that you can do gathering. It has two sets of feed dogs underneath the presser foot, and they, they work in conjunction together. You, you probably never lift the presser foot up once it's already set, unless you're doing any of this type of sewing. The differential is just on the side of the machine. But at the moment, it's set to both of those feed teeth, feeding the fabric through at the same rate. Now, if I was to slow the first one down, but the second one is still speeded up, and I'm sewing a stretch fabric, it will actually stretch the fabric as it goes through the overlocker and that gives you a lettuce edge or a frill on the edge of your fabric. If I do it the other way and I speed up the front feed dogs, that pushes the fabric through quicker than the second set of feed dogs are drawing them away, so therefore it's going to gather the fabric together. You can actually gather a bottom piece of fabric while on the top section it's flat, so you can sew together things like tears on little girls' skirts, so one's flat and one's gathered underneath. But have a play with it when you get it home, it's not as complicated as it sounds. But basically, this is why you buy an overlocker. I put the foot down, my blade's down, I've got all four of my threads, there's my fabric, which is a woven fabric, so it's fraying slightly, and put that underneath the foot of the machine. This is what I'm doing. And you can go very fast. But you can see the excess thread has been snipped away. So throw that away. And there you have an overlocked finish. That's all four threads. The threads need to sit perfectly across the edge. This is where you may need to adjust the tension if you don't find them laying perfectly flat. But this is actually my seam as well. So in this case, I don't need to take that to my sewing machine. I've got a perfectly strong, very secure seam, very, very quickly. And as you can see with the overlocking stitches, very professionally. So if you're using an overlocker for the first time, don't be concerned, it's a lot easier to use than you would imagine. It's very easy to thread up and the thread even comes to you with this machine as well. So full instructions are included. Have fun while you're using it.